it's very nice to be here. It's a, a topic that's dear to my heart, living a more holistic life and staying healthy as much as we can, right, with all our own challenges through life. Um, like Ariana mentioned, I grew up in Israel. I left Israel when I was 21, so I spent, you know, big uh, part of my life in Israel. And even as a child, I always had these odd kind of diseases pop up that were really strange, you know, and um, things sort of evolved and, um, you know, I was diagnosed with lupus when I was 29. And even before I was diagnosed, I, was, I loved, always loved cooking, um, but I was really interested in kind of healthy living, yoga, and I, I loved cooking and cooking healthy, whatever I considered healthy at the time anyway. And the more, you know, uh, my health sort of evolved, the more I learned and became very knowledgeable in that area of therapeutic diets. And what is a therapeutic diet? You know, the more I study um, functional medicine or integrative medicine, the more I learned that cooking is really the kind of canvas of everything. So if you're able to cook and eat healthy, then you're already a kind of a better starting point for everything else. And there's really no way of eating a healthy unless you cook. So it's really kind of, you know, those things go hand in hand. Eating out, um, even for well-meaning restaurants, it's just different. And you're never going to get the same quality of food, same quality ingredients. Um, one of the big issues is oils, for example. So, um, but I won't go into that too much. One of the biggest challenges I've had through all that was weaning off sugar. My son is seven, he calls me a sweetarian. Love, I love sweets, you know? Um, but I really cannot eat sugar and, um, you know, it's been very hard for me. I was one of those kids who would just eat, you know, two pounds of chocolate, just like that, and just love, you know, sweets and baking and all that. Um, and. Um, you know, then as I got more and more knowledgeable, um, sugar, you know, is not just uh, sugar we know that we buy in the supermarket, right? Does anyone else can add to that? Do you know any other types of sugar? Yeah, yeah. corn syrup. Uh, yeah, so there's like 50 of those kind of things, which things that you find on labels that are sugar, malt, and all, all this. Yeah. Uh, but then there's also other things like grains. So, you know, without getting too much into the physiology and it's not my field, um, you know, grains are also for our body, they're like sugar because they spike our blood sugar, you know. Alcohol, hmm? Alcohol gra grains of any kind, beans, anything that has carbohydrates in it. The starch, the molecule of the starch breaks up in the body and becomes sugar. So for our body, there's really not that much of a difference. There's some, but not a lot. So just to kind of backtrack now uh, into my life story again. So I actually studied architecture. I graduated, um, you know, I lived in Boston at the time and the recession came about. So I kind of had to recalculate what I was going to do for, to make a living. So I started, uh, I opened a personal chef service, cooked for people, and then soon after I said to my husband, I really would like uh, to cook for people of special dietary needs, because by then I've already tried every single diet on the planet and studied it just out of my own curiosity. Um, I wasn't a certified coach or a nutritionist, and I said, all I'm going to do is help people implement those diets because I know how overwhelming that could be when you have a health condition and someone tells you you should eat this, shouldn't eat that. could be very challenging, especially for people who don't cook. So that's what I did for about eight years in Boston. Um, so then, yeah, like sugar is a big thing. And, uh, you know, I was a vegan for a year, for example, and all I craved was sweets all day long. It didn't work for me. And now I know why. Back then I didn't know why. But everything I ate was carbohydrates. I ate very little protein. I did not get enough protein. Um, and therefore my sugar level, my blood sugar level was just spiking up and down and up and down. So in that process, you know, I realized 
And, you know, I mean, some of it I read, but a lot of it I kind of realized on myself. I said, I have to stay full because what happened to me with vegan food is I would eat salads and soups and things like that, and I'd get really hungry very quickly. It didn't last me very long. Um, so one way of going about, you know, weaning off sugar is to stay full. And how do we stay full? Anyone knows? What fills us up? Fiber, fat, protein, right? Those three things are a lot more filling than carbohydrates because they make our sugar levels kind of last longer and we're, not, we're avoiding those big spikes. So I'll show you today uh, some of the uh, recipes that I, are just my go-to everyday things that I make, still do, and I've made them, you know, a long time ago. Um, some of them do contain some sugar elements like dates which are healthier. Anyone knows why dates would be a little bit of a healthier alternative? Because of the fiber in them? Yeah, so the fiber and what fiber does, uh, there's still a, a ton of sugar in dates, you know, not processed sugar, natural sugar. Uh, but the fiber helps us slow down the digestion. So the sugar is released a little slower into the body, so we're not getting that big spike. But it's still extremely sweet. So you know, if you really have to stay off sugar, I wouldn't even recommend you eat dates, you know? It really depends on what is going on with you. Um, but so we have one sweet dish, which is this energy, energy balls. We will make a salad that um, is a little different than a green salad um, because it's made out of roots. Um, and um, the, it's very fibrous. Uh, it also lasts much longer. Like I would make that salad and just leave it in the fridge for a few days and just every time I would feel hungry, I'd just eat some and it was so filling, you know, even though it was a little bit sweet, it was still incredibly filling. Um, and we'll also make soup, um, which is kind of on the sweet side as well. Um, and we'll use cinnamon as a sweetener. Anyone try that like on oats? I mean, cinnamon is extremely sweet. so. If we combine it with things that are neutral or a little bit sweet, it becomes, it's sort of almost enough as a sweetener as well. Does anyone have any questions before we get into the practice of this, of cooking? No? Okay, so we'll start with the soup. We have sweet potatoes, and that's called, I call it orange soup just because it's orange colored soup. Um, carrots and butternut squash. You can also add other root vegetables like parsnip. Um, so I just maybe say one more thing that I say in my classes um, is that I don't use recipes to cook. And when I do cooking classes, I think their goal is to kind of show you what the outcome should be and give you an idea of that rather than follow like each step exactly. Because everything could be, there's many other, many options with everything. Um, and I don't want you to feel restricted and uh, I don't want to restrict myself as well, so. Um, I'm actually I also working on an online cooking courses and one of them is cooking without recipes. So you can teach people how to do a better job of cooking without recipes, um, which makes cooking a lot easier. You know, and uh, I think recipes first make it more difficult when you have to read each line and cook because you're using two different sides of your brain and that could be quite difficult and challenging. Uh, the other thing is recipes in my idea, in my opinion, are meant for people who already know how to cook because there's so many variables that you can encounter and unless you're able to judge for yourself if it's done or if you've done certain steps the right way, you might run into difficulties with recipes, you know. And a lot of times in classes people ask me, how long do you bake it in the oven? And I said, until it's done. And they said, you know, they don't know what done is. Because if they made the, let's say meatballs or whatever, if they made them slightly bigger than what I would make them, they would take another 10 minutes, you know, or 15 minutes. 
or on every oven is different. You know, home, home, home ovens are not calibrated regularly, so they vary in temperature quite significantly from one oven to the other. Ingredients are different, you know, uh, potatoes contain different amounts of water, different seasons, different places they come from. There's so many variables, so I just encourage people to use their judgment. So we'll start by sautéing leek. This is leek. A lot of people don't use it. Um, my grandma said every soup should have squash or some kind of pumpkin and leek in it. Leek is very sweet. It's an onion. It's a very delicate onion. Um, and you use the white part, and what that means is all the way to the leaves. So not just this part, because then you really don't get much out of it. All of this is what the white part means. And some recipes would say, you know, use the white part. Now you could keep this part for, uh, to put in the soup, but you, you need to pull it out. You know, you could put it in chicken soup, any soup, but you don't eat that. But it can, it can add flavor. And I washed all the vegetables except for the leek for the reason that it's, it's got many, many layers in it. So you want to cut it and then wash it because you want to get all that dirt. It's, a, it's in the ground, just like an onion. So it can often have a lot of dirt um, that's locked in, in there. So then we go ahead and we don't need to be too uh, precise with our chopping because we will blend this soup. So we're just going to put it in, in here. We'll make a couple of leeks. And we want to start by sautéing that. And I brought grass-fed butter today, which is really nice to use because it has some omega-3s in it. You know, you're adding a little health. And you don't have to use butter. You can use olive oil or um, coconut oil or anything that works for you. Um, you probably know that um, the healthy oils to use. Do you know that already? Divides into two categories. You know, animal fat, right? Like lard, ghee, etc. And then there's the vegetable oils. So in vegetables, yeah, if you're using heat, if you're cooking with it, uh, coconut oil and avocado oil. Uh, olive oil you can use if you're sauteing on like low heat, but I wouldn't use very high heat with it because it burns very quickly. And then um, and the animal fat oil, the good oils to use are ghee. Oh, thank you. Ghee, butter, um, especially grass-fed butter and um, grass-fed ghee. And yeah, I mean, they, they said animal fat these days believed to be healthier than the processed vegetable oils, or what we call vegetables, canola oil, corn oil, peanut oil, all of those, um, because they've been extremely processed. To get the oil out of the grains, you need to use heavy processing. Um, and... Um, and they, you know, what you get is essentially you, when you cook these oils, you get trans fats. So they transform. And uh, yeah, you don't want to use that. What about grapeseed oil? Where does that fall? Hmm. It's okay if you use it cold, but not to cook with. Huh. But it's not really considered very, very good. Mm -hmm. It's very mildly flavored, mm -hmm. so it can sometimes be a Good, better substitute than canola oil. Um, I always like ghee, like ghee is the most, it's kind of the least processed oil there is. You know, it's just, it's just the, the milk fat, you know. And um, when you think about all the other oils, they all require some kind of a plant or a processing facility, even olive oil. I mean, you need a press, you know, people would bring the olive somewhere to press it. It's not something they did at home, but ghee, it is. Ghee is something people can make at home. It's the most basic fat there is. But butter is good too. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with butter. I know if you're from, you from the 80s, you probably don't like butter, but. What about sesame oil? Where do you think of that? Um, butter, 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 butter. Yeah, I, we're gonna use some today. Yeah, I like the smell. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, yeah, it's nothing wrong with, you know, it's just pressed seeds, so yeah, that's fine. You know, as you know, with, you know, seeds are, it's easy to extract the oil, but from a canola grain, it's a different situation, or corn, it's much harder to extract it. So the more processing is involved, the less healthy it is, you know. What ha happens often with people who are diagnosed, you know, with something or, or just want to transform, transition into uh, a healthier diet or a diet that's better for them, um, is they often have to stop using processed foods. I mean, if you're on a low sodium diet or no sodium diet, you cannot buy anything, you know, and people are used to buying different packets, powders, sauces, uh, frozen foods, you really can't if, if you want to be on that kind of diet. So you really have to, you know, learn how to cook, which for some people it comes very late in life and can be challenging. So I think, you know, the idea of kind of learning to trust your intuition and learn some of the basic principles of cooking can make cooking a lot easier without necessarily clinging to recipes, you know, and trying to make them work when they don't and, you know, and having to run out and shop or, you know, this way you could kind of use what you have around. So this soup, we have, um, we're sauteing the, the leek, then we add the squash, um, sweet potatoes, and sometimes I add coconut milk at the end. So put that and then we, I just add the sweet potatoes as they are. So another thing is to try and not peel your vegetables too much. Yeah, we're going to grind it. and. Um, I keep the peel on. And the same with the carrots. Um, just because, you know, that's where all the nutrients are, the vitamins, and if you peel it off, you're left with mostly fiber. So I don't really saute these vegetables, although you could if you had a bigger pot, but that has, I just added water. Uh, you can also add some stock and just a simple little soup, you know. And um, I like to either add a little curry powder and cinnamon and sometimes coconut milk if you like it. That also would add sweetness and fat, so it would make it very filling. Okay. So let's say you don't have an immersion blender. Could you peel them? Um, no. You could put in the Vitamix or a blender, any blender, any blender. I just brought immersion blender because it's easier. Um, and I also think it's a great tool to have. It's extremely affordable. I mean, I bought this for like $20. It's been with me for years, this particular one. I mean, I have three of them, but um, yeah. And you can, you know, I have this attachment so you can just blend it in the pot. You don't have to move it anywhere. It's called an immersion blender? Mm -hmm. And it also attaches to this, uh, to this. So in there you have, you know, the little blender, you know, it's not, I have to put it on, but yeah. So you can do whatever, hummus or whatever it is you're making, uh, pesto sauce. So it does that. And then often it has another attachment that's a whisk. If you needed to whip eggs or cream or I don't know. Yeah, I just didn't bring it. We didn't need it, so. Yeah, I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's very convenient. So I'm just going to add a little bit. You can also add it later. Is that okay? That Sorry, I guess that I added this. Everyone's okay with this? Yeah. And a little cinnamon. All right, and we'll let that bring it to a boil and then simmer it. I think it's working. I didn't bring it. I forgot to bring it. I'm sorry. 
We'll just add salt. That's fine too. I mean, you can add it. It's not necessary. You know, like I said, I worked with people with special dietary needs, and one of the big one is the salt. You know, getting off salt is really difficult. And when you read the labels in the supermarket, the soups have the most salt. They absorb a lot of salt. And one way around it is to add salt right before you eat instead of into the soup because it doesn't get as absorbed so much and then you kind of feel it right on your tongue. You're like maximizing, you know, the salt kind of effect <laughs> because it goes right on your taste buds. And but when you add it to stews or soups or anything watery like that, it just absorbs and absorbs salt. You can keep on adding it and it's still not going to be salty. <laughs> So it's another thing when you, when you cook is that you know what goes into your food, you know. Uh, you have much better understanding of how much sugar you need to make something sweet and it's usually quite a bit, you know. Do you use tea salt much? I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the root salad, I call it. And like I said, rich in fiber. It definitely has sugar in it because beets are, you know, loaded with sugar. Uh, all natural sugar, of course, uh, carrots, um, and then, like I said, you can add jicama, kohlrabi, um, and then you can add, um, if you wanted to add protein, you can add some quinoa, you can add actual shredded chicken or any of that into that salad. Um, I usually would just make it vegetables um, and maybe some cilantro or mint, something like that. Um, so yeah, I'll show you how we, I do that. So you can use a food processor if you wanted to make a larger quantity. I always end up just making it by hand, though, if it's just for me. Another good dressing to put on it, so today we're going to use a little bit of the sesame oil and lime. Uh, but another good one is tahini dressing. Does anyone use tahini? Mm -hmm. Do you use it raw or you use, make a dressing out of it raw? How do you use tahini raw? raw. Just from the jar? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. You add the lemon and water and garlic? Mm -hmm. You do add it? Oh, yeah, okay. I just find some people just use it straight out of the jar, like peanut butter, you know. Mm -hmm. That's also fine, you know. In the Middle East, no one does that, but there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> there's no, never one way of using things. If it works for you, it works. So usually, you know, it's just um, the salad you can, you know, potentially you can add cucumber, let's say, but the problem with cucumber that it would go bad pretty quickly. So that's why I stick to root vegetables because not it doesn't just last, the salad gets better. You know, like stews get better, you know, it's just um, the vegetables get softer, um, less kind of chewy. And it's just, I know I have it in the fridge, you know, and that's kind of a snack, I go, a go-to snack, you know, instead of eating a chocolate bar, <laughs> you have this, so it has sweetness. Um, but also a lot of fiber. A lot of these recipes I used to make when I was in grad school and I was really, really trying to eat healthy. And I was very, very, very busy. And for me, they worked. So I could make a bunch and just kind of leave it around. The apple does get brown when if you leave it, you know, um, just add in that. But it does add a lot of sweetness. The apple skins are also good fiber. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and vitamins, you know, you don't want to peel it. And then a little bit of lime, a lemon juice, or uh, you can put vinegar, rice vinegar. Um, like I said, tahini works. And now I'm just lowering it. Could you hear it boil? Just lower that. We don't want to put too much water in there because you don't want it 
to be too runny when we blend it. You can always add more water. So the salad, I mean, so many things can go in there. Uh, nuts, sesame, you know, walnuts. Um, it's kind of more of a base, a little bit, you know. I mean, if you, if you love mayo, if we wanted to add that in, you could. Um, you know, it's just, I don't particularly, I don't eat it, but try to get like healthy mayo that's made with avocado oil and good ingredients. So, I mean, it's nothing probably haven't seen or anything, but usually there's beets, jicama, I like to add, kohlrabi, uh, daikon. Could you add red cabbage and daikon? Uh, you could, I guess, yeah. But it just has different texture, cauliflower, you know. Like you want shredded things, maybe. It's just, it would red be easier to chew. Good. Yeah, red cabbage, good, sure. I don't see why not. Probably yeah. The roots last, they last the longest, though, you know, of all the, you know, the roots, vegetables. I like grating the broccoli stems. Yeah, well, you can you grate those. Yeah, yeah, perfect, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I eat them, I, I steam them, but yeah, you can, they actually have more good stuff than the flowers, the stems and broccoli. Mm -hmm. And that uh, last recipe, which, um, sure you've seen many versions of. That helped me quite a lot with my chocolate addiction. <laughs> Not that it's passed completely, but it's a lot better. And it's really, it's really simple. And you know, I never even made uh, the mixture into balls. I would just eat it, you know, <laughs> just keep it in a bowl and just eat it. Too much work, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's up to you. And like I said again, um, there's so many things we can mm. add to this, um, depending on your taste. And I think I listed a lot of them in there. So I buy these dates, which are cheaper. They're just kind of little pieces of, of dates rather than the big expensive ones. So you can buy, you know, the shop dates. So put a little dates and then a tiny bit of water or um, we can also put a little butter since we have this nice butter or you can put a little tahini in it. Um, I didn't write tahini on the options, I don't know why. You can see I'm not really following the recipe. Then we're using, this is cashew flour, or you can use almond flour. Any nuts you like, Brazil nuts are good, or, oops, sorry. And so cacao, cocoa, cacao, you know, there's a little bit of a difference. So you want to use something uh, like raw, you know, the raw stuff, the good stuff that has all the mm -hmm. the raw cacao is what you want, and the cocoa is the uh, yeah it's it's pro it's more processed and therefore so I got confused in the spelling there yeah so you can change that on your sheet. addicted to chocolate there's nothing wrong with the the cacao part uh, the problem is with the sugar and the cream and all the other stuff that they add to it like wax and a lot of bad stuff. So you want, you do want to consume the cacao part, but not the other parts. And then um, I'll just blend that for now, and then we'll see what we feel like adding. A little bit of water just to get it moving. So uh, I used to make this with hazelnut and call it rotella, like Nutella. <laughs> so you can do that too if you wanted to. I guess that would be smooth enough for, for our purpose today. 
So I'm just going to pull this out. So now we're left with the mixture. Just a mixture. And I have a little oat flour, which is just ground oats. And I, I just ground the oats, so I didn't even, I didn't buy oat flour. Um, Is there a plan to get it to almond flour? Uh, no, so we, we made something, and if we wanted to turn it into balls, we need something to thicken it. So you can use almond flour, cashew flour, uh, anything to make it a little firmer. You can use coconut, you know. Um, whatever works for you, really. But do you have the cashew flour? I did add some cashew flour already. Yeah. So just use two different things. Without yeah, time. to get different things because cashew would give us protein, right, and fat, and the oat would give us fiber. Yeah. If you wanted it to be purely protein, you can use protein powder, uh, like I wrote on the handout, or just more nuts. Not flowers. So yeah, we just want to bring it into a firmer phase, that's all. But you also don't have to do that. If you're going to eat it with a spoon like I did, you don't really have to go through that. You know? um, and then we can uh, kind of roll it in coconut, maybe. So, or we can ro roll it in more cacao, one or the other. A little bit of both. Almost done. <laughs> so it helps to get your hands a little wet. It's like truffles, making truffles. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? And then do you set them up in the refrigerator or let them sit? Yeah, that helps them firm up if you refrigerate it, yeah. <coughs> I haven't even tried it, so. They're good. I think the soup is almost ready for a blending. You can also add ginger to the soup if you like ginger. Mm. It goes very well with that. Mm -hmm. Done that before. I've worked in restaurants and catering for many years. So it's always been my kind of side job. And it's, it's a totally different philosophy of cooking. Uh, totally different methods, techniques. It's a different world. It's not the same as home-cooked food. What I love is home-cooked food, recipes that have been trans, you know, kind of uh, passed on for generations, you know, that have nourished families, and um, they're tasty, but they're healthy as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah, one of the problem with eating out, which a lot of people do, uh, you're consuming a lot. I mean, it, the food is very rich. Mm -hmm. In Asheville, I find a lot of the foods have um, very creamy, whether it's coconut milk or cream, you know, dairy cream. Um, and also very sweet, a lot of the dishes, you know. And, you know, on a daily basis, you should eat simpler food, cleaner food. Uh, yeah. I think. I mean, you'll feel better. I've certainly felt the benefit of, you know, eating healthier and cutting on sugar. And, but it's always a, a journey, you know. I don't think it's magic. Um, I don't think you just 
even if you know how to make it, that all of a sudden, you know, your life will be changed forever from this day on. I think it's a process, it's an aspiration, we, we're just kind of working on it and um, just trying to better ourselves and care for ourselves, really. So that the way to work with this, uh, obviously there's a blade in there, right, that's chopping it, but the work is also mechanical in a way that you use it kind of like you're mashing potatoes or you want to do this, you know, you want to go at it mechanically as well. It's just not big enough, it's strong enough to do all the work like a Vitamix would or a blender. It's good for me, I don't eat a lot of salt, but if you wanted more salt, we, you can add more. And you can control the sweetness with the carrots and the sweet potatoes, how much of those you put versus the squash or the other vegetables. And you could definitely use oil, uh, onion as well, not just leek. Um, yeah, and, you know, coconut milk makes it creamier. But you could put this in the dishwasher. You don't want to put the, the engine part in the dishwasher. But, um, but this, yeah, really, really easy. You know? Super easy. Yeah, it's clean. I hope this was helpful. If you have any more questions, let me know. And I gave Ariana a list of dishes and she picked those three, but there's many more you can make. Think, use your creativity, think, and yeah. Very easy. It has to be easy or it doesn't become a habit. And you want it to become a habit. Something you make, you know, it's going to take me five minutes, I'm going to make it and I'm going to have it all week. You know, that's what you want. You don't want anything complicated. If I'm making a new recipe, it could take me three days to like wrap my head around it, get all the ingredients. <laughs> you know, that's not everyday cooking, you know. So yeah, I think we could uh, go to the next tasting phase. That's that.